Hello everyone, Chamber Check here, um, and today I want to talk to you guys about gun safety. I mean, as you probably guessed by my name, um, I do a lot of sports shooting, and um, you know, what, you know when I, whenever I play video games with weapons in them, you know, I, I'm the guy who always points out the mistakes and the inaccuracies. And if you watch my videos, you may hear me talk about some of these, you know, as I see them. Um, so I just want to go with you through the four cardinal rules of gun safety. Basically, the rules that anybody who knows anything about guns will be following at all times, or should be following, for the safety of them and those around them. Um, so, let's just dive right in. The weapon I will be demonstrating for you here today is this one, the Chiapa Rhino. Um, and yes, it is Chiapa, not Chiapa. Um, the commercials that, um, Kiapa USA puts out, uh, say that it is Kiapa. Well, that came off a lot more nasty than I meant it to anyway. Um, but yeah, it's Kiapa, um, not Chiapa. I mean, even though there is an H in there, it is silent. As far as I know, if there's anybody out there who works for Kiapa that could tell me one way or the other, I would appreciate it, but their, their commercials say Kiapa, and I'm getting off track, as I tend to do, um, quite often. Um, well, anyway, this is the Kiapa Rhino. This is the weapon that I'll be demonstrating with you, for you with today. Those of you who've seen Total Recall may recognize it, or the 2012 version may recognize it as the one used by Quaid's wife and some of the cops in the film. It is totally empty. Um, it is totally empty. So here we, you know, here we go. The first rule, the first rule, is know your target and what is beyond it. This basically means when you're shooting at something, when you're out at a range or out shooting, um, you know, on you know some land you own or something, you know, or God forbid, in a defensive situation, you always know where your target is and what is beyond it. You never shoot at shadows, for example. Like, it, for example, if you're hunting or you're once again in a defensive situation, you never shoot at shadows. You never shoot at things you don't see, um, because these. That bullet, when it's fired, um, you are responsible for where it goes. You are responsible for anything it hits. All right. um, you know, the, and bullets can go for miles and miles and miles. So if you're out in your land, you know, banging away with, um, you know, you and your buddies shooting at cans, you know, in the woods, you know, be aware of what's down the you know, what's down the road, what's down. You know that way because you are responsible for whatever you hit, even if it is two miles away. I, I, that, that, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, even if it is, you know, quite a ways away, you are still responsible for what you hit, um, or who you hit. You know, God forbid. So just watch what you're shooting at. Watch what is behind it because it, you know bullets will over penetrate sometimes. You know. <laughs> Obviously on paper targets, but also on metal ones as well. Um, so all you know, always, um, you know, always know that. The second rule is never, ever point a firearm at anything you are not willing to destroy at that exact second. You don't point it at your face. I'm not going to do it because I don't like doing it, even though this gun is unloaded. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you never point at anybody for a joke. Uh, oh, bang, bang. Uh, no. Wrong. Oh, bad YouTuber. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, never point at anybody, you, anybody for a joke. You never muzzle any part of your body. Now, I'm gonna sh you, 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 you always be careful. You, know, you never let it cross your hand. Now, I'm, the cylinder is open. The gun is essentially disassembled. So, I mean, I don't feel as bad as about doing this as I would pointing it at myself. Or something with the cylinder closed, but you you never let it cross a part of your body when you're reholstering or something. Um, heck, even that makes me nervous with the cylinder open. I still don't like doing that, and I'll stop now. Um, so you know, never let it cross a part of your body or anything else you want to destroy. It's be it a plasma TV, be it a lamp, be it you know a computer screen. Um, you know because. You know, these things are, are expensive, of course. Um, imagine that there is a laser coming out the end of your muzzle. And this laser cuts whatever you put in front of it. 
Now, th there's nobody in the house with me right now, so I don't have to worry about what we call flagging anybody with the muzzle. Um, that's why I picked today to do this video, and I do apologize for the tilted camera angle. This my web web webcam is stuck on top of a lamp, and for the life of me, I cannot get it to stand straight. Um, I may do another one of these videos in the future, just with a better camera, but I don't have a tripod for it right now. So this is this is this is the the placeholder video until I can get a better setup. You know, an actual honest to god microphone, not the one on the webcam, and you know just a better overall setup in here. What was I talking about before I started rambling off again like I, I tend to do? Um, oh yes, lasers. <laughs> um, and that laser cuts whatever you put in front of it. And, and you never ever want to let this destroy anything. If you wouldn't cut it with the laser, you shouldn't be pointing the gun at it. You know, that's the, you know, that's, that, that's the bottom line. The, what are we on? A third rule. Ah, I'm losing count already. Yay, college education. Um, the third rule, and you may, you may have seen me doing this in other points in the video, is always keep your finger off the trigger, out of the trigger guard, and straight along the frame. This is something that is broken near constantly by movies, TV shows, video games. Although they are getting better, movies and TV shows, and well, video games too for that matter, they are getting better at showing characters with their fingers off the triggers. But, you know, the, the, the surest way that the person that, that the person you're looking at on TV or the person, <laughs> God forbid, God help you with the range, uh, has no idea what they're doing as they're walking out with their finger on the trigger. Nobody in real life will ever do this that has any idea what they're doing. No military person who has, no person who should be allowed access to firearms will ever walk around with their finger on the trigger. No cops, no soldiers, like, you know, that soldier in the video game with his finger on the trigger is not doing it right. It is to be kept straight along the frame, you know, pointing down the muzzle of the weapon for the, sing for the single reason that If I had my finger on this trigger and I were to trip or somebody were to, um, you know, startle me, boom, you know, I were to trip, you know, whoa, and, you know, and, and your, your body naturally clenches itself when it is startled, when it is under stress, um, you know, it will use this startle response, and especially if you close this hand as well, because there's, you know, the autom I forget the technical term for it, but it's like the automatic the automatic clinch response or something like that. I can't remember the exact term for it right off the top of my head, but basically, if this hand clenches, this hand will too, and if it's whole, if this hand, if this finger is wrapped around a trigger, boom. Heck, even the double action mode on this weapon, you know, don't expect a long, heavy trigger pull to save you from your own idiocy. You know, you can still exert enough pressure if you're falling or something to trip over the trigger, you know, trip over this trigger and kabloom, blow a hole in something or someone and cause very serious um, and catastrophic well, injuries to people or objects. Um, yes. So always keep it straight along the frame or, you know, or like, you know, as I do sometimes, behind the trigger, like this, I, 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 I'll accept both, um, although, you know, for practical reasons, this is the way most, so, most military and police do it, because it's just easier than having to get your finger out of here and out of the trigger. Anyway, so straight fingers, this is called trigger discipline, and you'll, you'll hear me, you know, use this term a lot, um, when talking about, well, movies and TV shows that, Either do or do not um, follow this video games as well. Um, and, and the fourth rule: uh, a gun is always loaded. What this means is, you know, even though I know this weapon is unloaded, you know, once again, this is the reason I don't wave my hand in front of the muzzle with the cylinder closed. Even though I know it is unloaded, even though I have just verified it, I checked it: one, two, three, four, five, six six empty chambers that I can see daylight through. I am never ever going to point this weapon at myself. Now I'm pointing it up, just I'm not I'm just showing you what I mean. I'm not gonna point the muzzle backwards at my face. I'm not going to sweep part of my body with the weapon. 
Um, I'm not going to point at anybody for a joke. You know, nah, blah, 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 bang. Uh, no, wrong, bad YouTuber. No, um, I'm never going to point at myself as a joke because you always give any weapon the respect that it would be if it was loaded and ready to fire all the time, 100% of the time. You know, for example, you know, if you gave me, if you handed me this revolver and you checked it, if you checked that it, it was unloaded, closed it, handed it to me. First thing, you should hand it to me open like this. That's the proper way to hand off a revolver. Um, even if you were to do that, I would still open it up and check it. Now, this is not a slight on you or your chamber checking skills. This is just proper paranoia, properly paranoid as the trip goes. I mean, you can never be too paranoid with this. Um, so you always give it the respect it would, it would deserve with a loaded firearm. Even if you have personally verified that it is not. Uh, now, I mean, there are, you know, there are caveats to this. Like me, you know, pulling the trigger for your guys' amusement here. Um, you know, to show you, to show you what I mean, to demonstrate things, to dry fire practice, for example. You know, there, you know, there is logic that has to be brought into things, but it's just you need to respect it as a dangerous tool. I mean, you wouldn't wave, you wouldn't wave a bandsaw around, would you? Well, I don't know if you would personally. You, know, you right there, sitting, watching this on a channel, but I would I'd like to assume that you would not. Um, and so I would assume, that I would hope that you follow these rules when you were handling them, these four rules. Excuse me, sorry. Um, weapon is always loaded. Know your target and what's beyond it. Muzzle discipline, trigger discipline. And those are the four cardinal rules. Now there is one thing that is central to revolvers only that I want to bring into the thing here. Something that, you know, a sin committed by virtually every video game that uses a revolver. Now, you never, ever, 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 did I say ever enough times? Probably just once more for emphasis. Ever. Snap the cylinder closed with your wrist. You never want to snap the cylinder open or closed with your wrist. You're going to do, you're going to do four things. First, I don't know if the camera can see it, but there's a little pin in here that locks the cylinder in place. You're going to bend or break off that pin over time, basically meaning your cylinder will be stuck open or closed. Two, you're going to bend this hinge and this ejector rod so you can't eject your shells all the way, and your cylinder will become harder to open and close. Two and three. One and two, I don't remember how many there were. Sorry, my mind isn't in math tonight. It's one of those days. Um, nextly, we'll say, nextly, you are going, this thing right here, this part of the bearer, this is called the forcing cone. And when the cylinder slams against this, you are going to actually misalign the chamber, the cylinder, with the barrel. And what you're going to do when you fire the weapon, because most bullets are concave, they probably will not get stuck in there. Like, and cause the gun to blow up in your hand, like some people say. Although, you know, I, I wouldn't... I, I would never say never. But, what you're going to do is you're going to file down your forcing cone with each bullet that you fire. Bang, 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 bang. File, 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 file. And you're going to kill your accuracy because bullets are going to be bouncing down the barrel and coming out at strange angles, not straight. You're going to kill your accuracy, misalign your barrel, damage your weapon, and have to spend two hundred dollars getting it retuned by a professional gunsmith who will laugh at you behind their your back because that is the most noobish thing you can possibly do to a revolver and the most damaging short of just throwing it across the room. Um, so that basically concludes things. Um, you know, so if you see me use these terms, um, this is what they mean: trigger discipline, muzzle discipline. If you see me getting mad about people banging cylinders open and closed, but that we call bogarting because Humphrey Bogart popularized it back in the oh, I, 20s, 30s. I, I, I'm blanking on my movie history right now. But he was the one who popularized it, so they call it bogarting. Derisively, of course. Um, so that's basically that. I um, hope this was informative. Um, be safe, and um, 
I'll see you next time. Bye.